Today we are in the Lion City, Singapore. And we're about to check out the city's first UNESCO heritage site, a place that is the most popular garden in the world. And it draws normally 4.2 million visitors every year. Come with me and we're gonna check out one of my favorite places in the Lion City. Let's come check out Singapore's Botanic Gardens. Singapore's Botanic Gardens were originally founded in 1859 and covered 32 hectares. Today, these award-winning parklands span a whopping 82 hectares in the heart of the city. The gardens played a major role in Southeast Asia's rubber trade boom of the early 1900s. But today, visitors flock to this magical place to take in more than 10,000 species of flora. Swan Lake is one of the many striking features of the park. It was constructed in 1866 and covers just under 1.5 hectares. In the 1890s, a runaway crocodile took up residence in the lake. And as he was a little on the snappy side, the lake had to be drained to capture the unwanted guest. Today, you are more likely to see one of these guys on the lake. I've been here a few times to this beautiful uh, part of the park, but up until today, I've never seen any swans here. But uh, today, I got to see three of them here, floating in this area, which is pretty damn cool. The Dell dates back to 1882 and was originally created to cultivate and showcase these beautiful ferns. Over the years, more plants have been added, but today, this shady spot is much the same as it was in the early 1920s and is one of the garden's hidden gems. We are in the wetlands in the discovery zone of the garden right now and uh, behind me you can see the Orchid Islands and they are home to some quite rare and hard to find orchids. In fact, there's actually 30,000 kinds of orchid in the world and most of them are in Southeast Asia and in temperate climates near the equator. Including, over there somewhere, is the biggest orchid in the world, the tiger orchid. Alright, so I'm really enjoying this walk through the learning forest. I've actually learnt, as the name suggests, quite a bit about some of the plants that are here in this uh, zone of the park. But it's just such a beautiful, relaxing, out of the way kind of zone here as well. And um, the plants and the trees all around it, all around are so green and they're so lush. Um, it's just absolutely magnificent. Such a relaxing, calming place to be. On your visit to the park, you may even meet a few of the locals, just like this guy. Now where did he go? This part of the park is called the Walk of the Giants. There are trees of all different kinds around here, including some beautiful palms, which I really adore. Some of these trees actually grow up to, or are currently standing, at up to 30 metres tall, which is about the same as a 10-storey building. It's really, really impressive. You hear the sound of the creatures, the insects making noise through here, and you can barely hear the roadway. It's such a beautiful spot. On day two, I saw another one of the locals, but more on this guy later. Hey, well, this is one of my favorite plants here in all of the gardens here. It's called Curtain Ivy. It's not a true member of the ivy species, in fact. It's actually uh, more, it's more closely related to grapes, and it produces a little small black fruit as well. 
It's actually native to uh, the tropical parts of the Americas and over there it's been used for medicinal purposes including things like treating ulcers and, and rheumatism. Okay, so now I've told you all about it. Now it's time to go through the, uh, the Ivy Tunnel. Let's go. It looks like it's had a haircut and now it's got a nice little fringe. All right, these steps behind me are the prisoner of war steps here in the botanical gardens. These bricks were made and then laid by prisoners of war during the Japanese occupation of Singapore, which happened from 1942 to 1945. And if you look closely at some of the bricks, you'll even see some arrowheads in there as well, which is what the um, prisoners of war actually etched into the bricks as a sign of defiance to prove that they were being detained by the authorities. Okay, we're about to check out one of the biggest draw cards here in the Botanical Gardens. It's the National Orchid Garden, and it contains more than 1,000 species of orchids and about 2,000 odd uh, hybrids as well. Also to be found within its walls is a celebrity garden, which includes uh, orchids and hybrids, which have been named after more than 100 different celebrities, including Princess Diana, Margaret Thatcher, and Andrea Bocelli. So let's go check it out. Opening in 1995, the National Orchid Garden sits atop the highest hill in the gardens. There are more than 60,000 orchids in the collection, which is spread across a colourful three acres. The orchids are carefully arranged using a colour system that corresponds with each of the four seasons. Yellow and cream for spring, red and pink for summer, white orchids for winter, and purple and red orchids for autumn. Now it's not just orchids that you find in this wonderful garden here. You also find other plants and other ferns and the like. And one of my favorite plants of all time is this one here right behind me. It's the frangipani. It's a, a plant that grows really, really well in tropical locations like Singapore, which is near the equator. And here they have many of these beautiful trees in all different colors. As I mentioned earlier, here in the gardens they actually have an area where they've named orchids, or rather hybrid orchids that they've created after famous celebrities to celebrate their success and to commemorate them coming to the gardens. Some of them are beautiful and in full bloom. Let's go check them out. Hybrid orchids are created when the pollen of one parent plant is transferred to the stigma, which is the sticky surface receptive to pollen, on another. Although the National Orchid Garden opened in 1995, orchids have long been a part of the garden's history. An orchid house was opened in 1899, and in 1929, the first hybrid orchid was created right here. It seems like wherever you look in this garden, there is always another incredible blaze of colour to enjoy. Including Singapore's national flower, the Vanda Miss Joaquim Orchid. The 
The VIP Orchid Garden features orchids named after visiting dignitaries to Singapore. Right now we're checking out the VIP Orchid Garden. All the orchids here are named after like heads of state, prime ministers, presidents, princes, um, you know, high commissioners, governors, governor generals. And out of all the ones here, of course, there are many, many beautiful ones. There's one that I think probably shines the brightest or like stands out the most out of the whole lot. And that's the one which you can see right behind me right now. This one here was uh, first created in 1997 to in memory of Princess Diana, who of course passed away in a tragic uh, car accident over in France. It's a stunning orchid and out of all the ones here in this garden, it's probably the one that looks the healthiest and the one that seems to glow the most and give off the most beautiful pure energy here in this garden. Symphony Lake features a large stage built on an island in the middle of the lake and sometimes hosts performances by the Singapore Symphony Orchestra. It also features a lot of lily pads. Walking back past Swan Lake, I came across this guy. Look out there on the water. Now it looks like a snake, but it's actually a, a water monitor here. And he looks pretty big too. With a little help from my new friend, I tried to follow this incredible creature as he cruised through the fringes of the lake. Malayan water monitors are native to Southeast Asia and can grow up to three meters long, making them one of the largest lizards in the world. They mainly live on land but they are also great swimmers and can even climb trees. Luckily for us, Malaysian water monitors are non-venomous and are shy of humans. But it's still best to leave them alone, as if cornered, they may leave a nasty bite. Sometimes mistaken for a crocodile, the monitor has a short snout and a long blue forked tongue that it flicks in and out on a regular basis. My last stop for the day was the Ginger Garden, which features this beautiful man-made waterfall that you can even walk behind for an epic view. The garden also includes more than 250 species of plants and flowers that belong to the ginger family. Day three, and this time I found myself in a more secluded part of the garden, a place that felt miles away from the carefully manicured gardens of the previous days. Alright, we're about to enter a very special part of the Singapore Botanical Gardens right now. This area is known as the Rainforest. It's a six hectare region of the park, which is pretty much basically as Singapore was before development and before even the gardens were created back in the 1800s. Within this six hectare area, there are over 300 species of plants and trees. Singapore is one of only two major cities in the world to actually have a rainforest within their city limits. The other one being Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Let's go uh, check it out. Let's see what we can find in this amazing part of this incredible botanic garden.
Well, I guess it's only appropriate. We are in the rainforest and now it has started to rain, which seems awfully apt. Sometimes you forget that this isn't just a botanical garden, it's actually a garden for the whole city. A lot of this city lives in apartments in tall high-rise buildings, so this is often their only chance to get out in the garden or in the backyard. So you often see people doing exercises and stretches and other interesting things, maybe even yoga as you walk through the park. No doubt one of the reasons why these gardens are one of the best in the world is because they are looked after really, really well. You don't have to walk very far in the garden to find somebody or a group of guys or ladies as well working on tending the gardens and keeping them in tip top shape. From me to you guys out there, if you ever watch this video, thank you for doing such a wonderful job and working so hard to maintain this beautiful garden. The Ethnobotany Garden features more than 300 species of plants that are deeply rooted in the traditional cultures of the Malay Archipelago, Indochina and South Asia. It's a great place to learn how the indigenous communities of the region use the plants in this zone for food, craft and construction and medicinal purposes. Jacob Ballas Children's Garden offers kids 14 years and below a place to play and explore and seek out adventures. Right, so this lady's just taken this swan out of this crate and uh, now he's just out to enter the water. Maybe he's been in rehab or something. Eco Lake is a peaceful waterway with a healthy population of turtles and birds. Some of them rather noisy. Now there's a strange sound coming from in amongst these reeds somewhere. Really not quite sure what it is. Because again, it's like a muffled duck. I think I might have found the person it was chatting to. Right. Okay, make sure you wash behind your ears. Yeah, I think you heard me. And nearby, I encountered another friendly fork tongue local. Hey, thanks for joining me on my journey to Singapore's amazing botanical gardens here. I really, really enjoy this place and in a city where there's so many things to see and do, so many attractions, this one still ranks really, really highly on my list. It's such an amazing, well-kept place. It's beautiful, it's relaxing, and I recommend it to anyone who comes to Singapore to spend at least, at least a little bit of time in this incredible park. Hey, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and even better, we'd love it if you would subscribe to our channel too. That would be great. That would be awesome. <laughs> Thanks again for watching and until next time, we'll see you later.